Hello there everybody, this is Ananya and today we will be performing some data analysis on the data set Forest Fires in Brazil. Now this is one of the most popular data sets out there, so you'll easily find that in Kaggle. You won't really be facing an issue with that. Let's go ahead and have a quick look as to what the data consists of. So you have forest fire numbers depending on the state, the month and the year. And the year ranges from 1998 to 2017. So our task out here is to basically try and predict what number of forest fires occur in the year 2018, 2019, and so on. And we'll also try and do a cross check with the values given on the internet, the raw facts, and what we try and predict it. And let's see how correct we go. Okay, let's go ahead and start off with some coding. The first four libraries that you see, you need to pip install them in case you already don't have them and import it. And go ahead and import map. We now need to read into our CSV file. So go ahead and give the path to it and make sure the encoding is a Latin one. Why? Because if you have noticed, the months that you see here are of the language Portuguese. And you need to provide the encoding to it so that it can read it out properly. Because if you don't give it, it's going to give you some errors. Now, if I see what head gives me, you can get this table. Now, uh, me, not understanding Portuguese at all, I need that to be converted into English. So what I simply do is use the replace function in pandas. So you say into a function, you say df.month.replace, and you pass in the old month and the new month. So this is what you will be passing, the, all the 12 months. Now, you don't have to go ahead and type all of those months out. You'll find a text file in the description below, wherein you will get this entire cell out, written down for you. You can simply go ahead and copy that. Saves a lot of your time. Now, if I run head, this is what it will give me, English months, which I can understand. Now let's have a quick description of what the data, the sum of the numerical values that we need to get to know about. Now you simply can remove year, you don't have to look into year, but let's have a look at the numbers. The mean is 108 fires per year, maximum of it being 1998. Okay, and the maximum year provided, as we know, is 2017. So the max number is 998 fires. Okay, so that's quite a lot. Now, the standard deviation, that is, how far is the data actually stretching out? That's 190. Now, we need to deal with the mean out here and also the standard deviation. Now, let's go ahead and do some proper visualization as to properly understand the data. Firstly, what I want to try out and do is I want to group by the number of forest fires by the state. How do we do that? Simply use pandas.groupby. You pass in the column that you want to group by, that is the state, and you also give in which aggregation function you want to perform. In this case, we want the sum. Next, I'm going to use catplot. What is catplot? It's plotting using the categorical variables in the data set. So my x-axis is going to, this is using Seaborn. It's recently been added into the Seaborn library and it's, trust me, it's great. So x is the x-axis showing us the states, y giving us the number of forest fires, and we need to pass in the data, go ahead and paste in all this, and kind is the kind of the graph you want to be displayed. So in this case, I'm gonna try out the violent graph uh, and we'll go ahead and make a couple of changes and see what various charts we can perform. And the aspect is basically you trying to change the size of it. We also want to print out the worst st states hit by the forest fires. You need now, We I just told, we will be dealing with the mean and the standard deviation. So you go ahead and sum up the mean and the state. Okay, this is what you want to do. And numbers greater than this, that you are checking the average of all the forest fires, but you're also trying to figure out the outliers or how far it is stretching. Hence, you need to consider the standard deviation also. And that's it. You need numbers greater than that. So for what you'll get a list back to you and you traverse within the list, you loop within it and you print the values of the worst hit states. That's it. Now let's go ahead and run this. Okay, you see you have Sao Paulo and quite a few states which I do not know how to pronounce. 
<laughs> okay, so this is what it gives us. Let's go ahead and increase the aspect of it. Okay, so I really hope you all can see that. And let's see as to how this is actually going on. The ones having the thinnest width of the violin are the ones that, that are the states being impacted the most. The thinner the width, the more is the impact. For example, there's a distrito federal out here. Okay, this has such a wide violin range and also a state, the second state out here, they're very wide and hence they haven't been impacted with by forest fires to that extent. But Mato Grosso, okay, I'm really sorry if I'm going horrible with the pronunciations, but please forgive me. These three states have the thinnest violins and hence you can uh, safely assume that they are being hit the worst. All right. Let's go ahead and do the same thing. Now we need to traverse a little to the year side now that we have seen the states. So I'm going to go ahead and replace all the states that I find. And what I need to do out here is I need year. Okay. I'll be, I will be grouping by year this time. Go The same thing I will be running by year. Let's see what we get. The worst hit years, okay, is 20. 2003, 15, and 16. Now let's see how the graph actually goes. From 1998 to around, let's say, 2004 to 2005, it wasn't really much, and the graph has been pretty much basic, and it's down. It's not that high. But as you can see, from 24, 2004 to 17, from 4 to 17, it's been a pretty high trend. Okay, it hasn't gone down really. It's gone up many, maybe very gradually, but it has gone up. Maybe we can go ahead and take in this trend and analyze further on this. So instead of our violin plots, okay, maybe we, I can go ahead and show you all how a bar plot can actually be used. Simply replace violin by bar. And this is how the bar plot will look. Okay, this will be the length in this case and not the width. Okay, pretty, pretty graphs. Now let's go ahead with actually seeing. Let's visualize on the years now. You do the same thing. You group by the year and take the sum. And we'll be using matplotlib this time. And our x limits will be from 1998 to 2017 because that's the range given to us. And I have plotted a scatter plot out here. This might not be very visualistic, but do you see the trend goes right up there? And from around 2005 or something, it's got a pretty gradual uptrending rate. If I were to give a line plot to it, let's see how that looks. Okay, there you go. Much better for the eyes. So there you go, an uptrend. Now let's deal with this. Now looking at the graph, do you think it would fit into a linear, a uh, simple one degree polynomial equation? Because I don't think so, because it's very, very aggressive out here. So let's try out a polynomial equation of the second degree or the third degree, right? So what you need to do is you need to use the poly 1D and the poly fit functions. What does poly fit do? It basically fits your data into the polynomial function. So let's go ahead and use the second polynomial function for the graph above. So you use poly fit that way and you apply poly 1D to it. What does poly 1D do for you? It beautifies your polynomial into a, an equation. So if this was of the degree 2, it would put in an x square and an x and a number. D. I'm going to go ahead and comment this out for now because we'll do a little bit of trial and error on that later. And I need 20 values out here. Why 20? We'll, I'll show an error to you all as to how that will needs to be fixed and it needs to be a 20. This is going to be 1998, and this is 27. All right, and you go ahead and put all of these figures and the years and x limit and y limit and the legends. Okay, you go ahead and do that. There's no explanation really. So I'm going to go ahead and run that, and let's see how the second polynomial function is working on our raw data. Well, it doesn't really seem to look all that great, right? So maybe something going 
a little lower and then again going higher and hence you can safely assume that you need to use the third degree polynomial in this case that is the best soup okay i left this at 2004 i need to make it a 1998 okay let's go ahead and run that and there you go this looks like the exact fit that we need not under not over it's just fine <laughs> now let's come to the point of dealing with years only greater than 2004 because we have really up and down data going on before that so just go ahead and you need you're dealing with years greater than 2004 so i'm simply going to go ahead and change the years of 1998 to 2004. okay okay the error that i had to show you all right and Okay, so what? why is this 20 actually required? I'm going to remove it and show you all the error. Right down there, you can see the X and Y dimensions have different shapes. Okay, the first one is 50 and the other is 20. And hence, you need to make them exactly the same. Hence, you give years of only 20 values. You don't need more than that. Okay, we got this straight. Now I'm quickly going to go ahead and change these to 2004. And I tried this out earlier, but anyway, let's go ahead and see this. Now I'm going to keep it of the degree 3 for now, and let, we will make it a trial error process. Okay, now this is the error that I wanted to show you all again. You see this time it's 20 and 13. So you need to make them the same. So let's go ahead and change the years of to only 13 values required. Let's run that. And you see, it's kind of all right. It's not that great. Uh, because see, you see this entire line being totally at the bottom and not evenly distributed. So let's try out the second degree polynomial in this case. Might We might take an average best case. Okay, this is much better because it's dealing with both up and down values. So I'm going to stick with the second degree polynomial for now. And now that we have got a rough idea, now comes the most important prediction part. It's very simple. The values, the equation that you got here, simply go ahead and use that into a for loop. The for loop I'll be ranging from 2018 to 2025. Okay, you take the upper limit always and you use the truncate function and simply print it out. Okay, this, these are the values that you want. Now we need to cross check that. So for the, let's say we predicted for the years 2018 to 2025. Now let's just go ahead and randomly check the year 2020. It says 41,000, approximately 42,000. So I'm going to go ahead and search forest fires or let's say Amazon forest fires 2020. Okay, let's open up the, okay, we don't need to open it up. Do you see this line out here? 44,000 outbreaks of fires registered between January and August. Okay, that this looks very, very saddening, but what do we do, right? So it turns out we did predict pretty much correctly. We just, let's say, 4,000 values away. And that's it. We have done quite a lot of analysis and a prediction at the end. Hoped you all enjoyed this, found this a little useful. You can go ahead and use this for any data set of your choice too, if you all want to do try out something different. Okay, hope you all liked it. Bye-bye. I'll see you all soon.